Hey everybody, this is Jake and you are listening to the Encouragers Podcast Show. Boris had a um, HDMI on him, you know? Oh yeah, yeah. Because I have a, I have a HDMI for audio, so I got the high level. I just didn't have the aux cord. <clears throat> no. When did they turn Martin, Lu- Martin Luther King into a national holiday? Say that again. When did they turn um, MLK? When? Yeah. Oof, that's when a good be, question. When did it become a national holiday? Because we get, we got overtime or we got holiday pay today. Let's we'll just think about like, you know, in the 60s, the FBI was trying to like get them to commit suicide, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so shady. So and now they, and now they gave him a holiday. And he had, is I saw, saw somewhere today, he had like 80%, like out of the United States, out of the people in the United States, he had, um, he had uh, 80% disapproval by the general public. So you just look at how far that's changed right now, because we like revere him. And I would say for me, it's probably like one of the most important holidays Um, other than like Christmas and Easter. Right. So uh, just for what it represents, like somebody having change and, you know, we we were actually, I I feel like, you know, our generation was moving close to really like race was becoming a thing of the past before it got revived here, you know, of recent, but, Mm -hmm. you know, I feel like we were almost past it, but it didn't serve. It didn't serve the politicians, anything for people to come together more. (laughs) Mm. Um, yeah, I a lot know, of people let's look it up. Yeah, look it up. But a lot of people just they don't really care about. They just want to get the holiday pay. And you know, yeah. you see everyone posting up their MLK quotes and everything, and right, you know, and television programs there's, about it. When they were trying to kill two this kind, dude. right, right. So there's there's two kinds of posters for MLK Day, right? Mm-hmm. There's ones that focus on the positive quotes right and then there's mm-hmm. ones that are like talking about white appropriation and you know and, and all that stuff and and of course that has its place right but you think like if you were this is what i i think if you were to ask him you know if we we have a holiday celebrating this this amazing man's life right so do you think he'd want us to focus on the negative or the positive I can't pretend to know him, but t- to me, and of course, you know, this is what we're all about, right? Encouragers, right? We want to focus on the positive. So I think that is a better way to remember someone than to focus on, to use it as vitriol against somebody else. You know, I, th- I think he would want his memory to be used to bring people together, you know? Yeah. So, and I don't know, right? That, that That's just my opinion, but um. And I mean, that's how I how I feel. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And hopefully, you know, everyone's um, that cared about today posting his quotes got sports stars and influencers all posting different quotes today all over social media. Hopefully that transitions over, you know, hopefully they can right. make it all. They can remember that. Um, what? next week or the week after <laughs> not I mean, just I like for a to, day <laughs> right i like to study his I like to study his writings i you know like if it comes up in the year like during the year he just has a lot of, uh, you know he has a lot of good things to say he's written a few like well i don't know if he wrote the books but there was a few books written about him that are just interesting mm-hmm. and full of his quotes i'd have to find out is there any know, movies when, about him you know if there's any movies about he, him you know, I was uh, I was just thinking about that the other day. Like, uh, that's that's due. It's gonna be, you know, let's have let's have Will Smith do it. You know, I'm sure he would crush it. <laughs> oh, I know he crushes everything else. Yep. He did the uh, tennis. What's that? Um, Vanessa and Serena Williams. Yeah. Right. They just or Venus is it Venus Williams or Venus and Serena? Yeah. Venus and Serena. Yeah. I want to check that movie out. I heard it was really good. He did a good job. Agreed. 
Well, yeah, MLK Day, man. Everyone at work today, all they cared about was the holiday day. day. Off. Yeah, day <laughs> off and the holiday pay. Or holiday extra, pay was, yeah. what, time and a half? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was a good eight hours of holiday pay today. But, man, coming up this weekend, we have our Dallas trip, right? How excited are you for our Dallas trip? Uh, you know, not not excited at all. Tell everyone about our Dallas trip, <laughs> real quick. Just just give, give them a, a brief explainer about what's going down this weekend. Yeah, and I was being very sarcastic there because <laughs> that's all we've been talking about for In our know, group if chat. This ends, if, yeah, if this actually go, it turns into a podcast here, but um, so you know the, the reason why we're congregating together is we're celebrating. You know, one of our, our good friends in the chat, um, Tonga, opened up a card shop mm-hmm. and uh, for Pokemon. And, you know, those of you who follow the show obviously clearly know this, but if this is your first one, you know, in sports cards, right? So so this week was his grand opening um, and really busy and everything. So, you know, while he's super busy, it would have been nice to be out there this week too but he would have had no time to kind of hang out. So we're all going to get together um, this weekend, Mm -hmm. uh, Friday through Monday and celebrate together and just, you know, probably mix a little bit and talk stories, jam a little bit and just kind of have, you know, our own little way of celebrating, you know, one of our, one of our great friends really making some big moves. Uh, You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of us are struggling trying to figure things out and trying to, you know, make moves and, you know, all of us want to come up and, you know, make more money so we can be financially free. He's doing it right. And so that, I think that's why all of us are so excited just to see him be him doing it. And then on top of that, we can go hang out and have fun and clown on each other. And <laughs> yeah, hopefully, uh, you know. It'll be fun. Hopefully we get uh, able to do a live podcast or not a live, but like an in-person podcast with everyone. Record there. one. Yeah, record one. So bring you bring your mic, bring your mic and your mic stand if you can. And the cable. Did it come with the XLR cable? Do you remember? It it it, it came with, um, yeah, it came with the microphone, but I misplaced it already. I was looking for it for like an hour before this. And so I got to find it. I put it, I put it away in a box somewhere. You know, I'd have limited space in my current living situation. So I like organized it, but I organized it so well, I can't find it. <laughs> All right. Well, well, hopefully it'll pop up when you're packing. Right. But yeah, we're, I'm super excited. I'm going down with uh, Lute. We're going to come and make it a, a vacation, a little four day getaway um, for us. And I can't wait to see you, Jake and Tech. Tech is coming down. Joe and Paul and coach are all invited. We're all invited down for a nice uh, weekend down in Dallas, Texas. I can't wait to see the car, uh, the card shop. When I was there earlier this year, um, was it back in August? It was still being um, built, still being um, constructed. So it'll be good to, just to see his, the progression of the shop and just see everything. You see the break room. But I don't know if you guys remember, but Donga, we had Donga on as a guest as, on our podcast talking about sports cards. And it wasn't until I seen how successful Tech was doing when Tech showed me how much he was making with sports cards, then I that then I decided to jump on the ship and start investing in sports cards. And through their those two's guidance, but through Donga and Tech's guidance, I was able to, you know, accumulate a uh, nice little collection of uh, investment for future endeavors but yeah don was on one of our very first podcast um episodes talking about sports cars so if you have a chance to go back and listen to that if you haven't been able to listen to that we had him on twice right or maybe once i don't remember no we had him on twice one was the initial talk and the other one was a follow-up so mm. but yeah we get to go to see his shop man it takes a lot of courage uh, one thing to freaking do something like that go out on a limb and start your own business you opening up a card shop you're making money and surviving off of cards what does that what does that say about what he's doing i mean that's a lot of courage overcoming fears oh for sure because you know i'm sure you he's probably thought about it he's like what if this flops what if nobody comes through you know what if it fails he's got his wife and his kid you know so he's you know, I'm sure he had all those thoughts, but, you know, obviously he was super popular, you know, before that with good vibes and, 
you know, he was able to transition, I think, right to that. So, and he's got a lot of support, you know, he's just one of those guys, like, you know, you look at the name of what he had before good vibes, like he's all about just spreading that good luck, you know, that, that good feeling to everybody, that positivity. And so everybody wants to be around him. He's just one of those guys, you know, he'll laugh all the time. He'll tell good stories. And so, you know, just doing good to other people, it, it pays off. Right. So, yeah. and, and, and that's just who he is. So, you know, as long as he, keeps it up like that he, he's just going to be successful man he's going to be crazy successful he uh he mentioned in the chat you know the next goal is now he's got this you know he's got this open next goal is to you know have a couple car washes and you know and be able to kind of pivot and have some other um you know some other avenues of income as well yeah that's that's one thing that um from being able to his entrepreneurial mindset just carries him further and further and further to other adventures and and uh, avenues of income so that's freaking awesome man congratulations Tonga again can't wait to celebrate with you this weekend but man yeah a lot of a lot of uh, interesting things going on in the world to, uh, we you know recently over the weekend our Friday it was Tonga Saturday right uh, that big old volcanic explosion that happened it was um the magnitude of this explosion was so far reaching that it, it reached, I mean, the effects of the, of that volcano of the effects of that explosion reached all the way to Florida. Like that is just one volcano. They said um, the blast, or I was reading somewhere, the magnitude of that blast was about a thousand Hiroshima's or something. Did you read that? Did you see that something? Not a thousand, maybe not a thousand Hiroshima bombs going off, but um, uh, just reading, man, it's so sad. Which been following it could be this. right, you know, because like the that was underwater, right? Like, so mm. imagine how you you think how how much that softened the blast of you know of what went off if if that was above, you know, where it didn't have the resistance, mm. it probably would have caused you know worse. I don't know if the tsunami risk is less when it's above the water, uh, but the earthquake was, so it was an earthquake 7.6, right? On the Richter scale. Yes. And so that's what caused the tsunami. And then the tsunami was, was, um, you know, people were affected in California. They had, um, they, you know, they had a surge from the tsunami You know, it wasn't something that I don't think anybody lost their life, but you were able to see it in, you know, on the coast of California, I believe in Chile too, in Chile. So it's just, you know, it's insane to think, you know, something so far away, you know, can affect, you know, we can hear it in Alaska. We can hear it in Florida. Uh, what was it? The barometer pressure that went yeah, off the, in Florida? Yeah, that, it affected the pressure, the air, air system pressure, system pressure all the way to Florida. That is powerful, wow. man. That is like a whole continent away. Oh, uh, here, I got the article. It said estimated by scientists to have exerted a force equivalent to 1,000 Hiroshima nuclear bombs. Yeah, so you're right. My gosh. Yeah, yeah. that's wild. That's wild. Uh, you know, from watching some of the people that they were before the, um, some of the people's lives before uh, the communication got disconnected, um, it said some of them, some of them said, um, some of the people said that their ears popped because of how loud it was. That is crazy, That man. change in yeah, the change of pressure. Yeah, I hope everyone's okay over there. I know we're still trying to figure out you new know, communication for the most part is still down. There's no internet, yeah. right? Because the cable, the cable is severed, right? So yeah. we're still, you know, praying and hoping that everybody is okay over there. Um, you have on, on the, uh, the, on the Instagram, on your Instagram account, um, you posted where people can donate, right? If, um, if they have the means to do so. Yeah. It's uh Pita, the the Tongan um Olympic Olympic dude. Um he has started a one one of the fundraisers. He's the one that always has his shirt off for those that didn't yeah. place the name. <laughs> the dude that's always in the Olympics, the, the representative Tonga with uh, his shirt off. Right. Pita Taufa Taufa Tofua Taufa Tofua. He started a GoFundMe account. Is it a GoFundMe or? Uh, I need to look. 
it's on the um, it's on the encouragers uh, Instagram page right now. Did you post it in your stories or is it ac- an actual post in on your uh, Instagram? No, you know what? We need to go up and post the. I think mm-hmm. it was just on the story. Yeah, so we'll post it permanently so that people can go there if they want to be able to donate. <clears throat> there you go. But yeah, Pita the Lolo, uh, Pita the shirtless Tongan dude. <laughs> props to him for yeah. organizing it and people are you know they, they're uh and he's using his platform to help you know what i mean everyone knows tonga by that dude and the shirtless topless dude from the olympics so i think it's just um commendable and appreciate him doing that there's still a lot of work to be done i think uh, the new zealand um air force new zealand was out there or they're making their rounds or reconnaissance rounds checking out Everything I think Australia is helping. So props to those countries who are coming through. Still a lot to figure out. But hopefully, um, I read in a different article that hopefully the communication lines can be set up um, sooner than later. They're estimating, what, two to three weeks for them to be able to assess or to repair it, even if it's even repairable. So God willing, they, they're able to repair it sooner than later so we can hear about our loved ones man i know my right. mom was my mom was on the phone with her sister when she was trying to escape the tsunami waters while wow, the waters were rushing in and the next thing you know the communication was lost and never heard from her again so, how terrifying oh, man that was you know mom couldn't sleep she was up she didn't go to sleep until like seven the next morning when that happened she she was terrified but i pray yeah. that everyone the prayer for tonga for tonga hashtags all over the place and just continue please to keep them in your in your prayers but man yeah it's most it's definitely crazy. it's only 15 days into the new year that, that happened on the 15th of their 15th 15th of january only 15 days into the new year and we have this huge explosion crazy that blast was so powerful they heard in fiji and in alaska like you were saying earlier my gosh. I think I think once we kind of get past this, like it, there's a lesson that could be taken from this where it's like, you know, some people are passionate about climate change and, you know, I am all for polluting less. I think that is a great thing for our planet and for, for all of us. But man, don't forget to hug your loved ones. <laughs> like that's, that's, the, that's the most important thing. You know, you can have your passions, but take care of your family, your friends. Make sure you tell them you love them. Because mm-hmm. we, you really don't know, you know, you really don't know what can happen in the next moment, right? So, you know, so thankful for, you know, I'm, I'm, th- I'm thankful that, you know, that thing didn't just blow up our whole planet, right? What if that was a super volcano? <laughs> so, Dude, uh, there know, are super so, volcanoes too, right? Aren't there? Um, I think there's a couple. I think there is one in the Pacific. I think there's one over by the Philippines, and mm-hmm. I think the, um, and then Yellowstone. Those are the ones I know of off the top of my head. Oh, oh the no. um, is the the Yucatan Peninsula in, in Mexico, or is that where the, an asteroid hit? Oh, I'll have wow. to do some more research to figure to to I I can't remember, but I think there's a number of them, um, you know, of course, out there. And again, you know, they that that just speaks to the importance of you don't know how long you have on this earth, and so mm-hmm. treat people accordingly, right? Be kind, yeah. you know, show love. 100%. Um, you know, that's, you know, I, I don't anticipate dying anytime soon, but you know, it's like, I, I'm really happy to be able to go, you know, out and visit you guys this next weekend and, yeah. and then see my family after that. Right. Cause like at the end of the day, that's, what's important. Hmm. 100%. And, and that's another reason why we kind of d- did this trip also to be able to, you know, we never know, like you were saying, and j- we just never know, man. So this is this will be a great trip for everyone. I'm excited. And then, yeah, man, it just you just never know. Treat people nicely, kindly. But. Um, c- circling back a tiny bit on what we were asking earlier. Mm-hmm. So it looks like um, MLK Day, right? Martin Luther King yeah. was signed into law on 1983. It mm. took effect three years later, so 1986, when I was a young lad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, so 1999, 
New Hampshire, I'm on Wikipedia right now, just reading this off, but New Hampshire was the last state to name a holiday. Come on, New Hampshire behind the times. Um, they were the last, so 1999 took them a while to recognize. And then they first celebrate celebrated in January, 2000. So, um, I was in Spain at that time and, uh, I was about 19 years old. So that's kind of crazy. It took them so long to figure that out. <laughs> oh. And then when did it come, uh, become a national holiday for, for us to get paid on uh, on national holiday? <clears throat> so the state holiday so south carolina let's see National. oh i gotta talk to you about north carolina here in a minute uh, we, we we got we got our issues for sure here let me search let me just search it because it's difficult to find okay so it's a federal holiday when did yeah. MLK Day. Because I don't remember it being like a national holiday where people get off and banks are closed. I I think that just recent more recently happened, like just recently. If I'm not mistaken, I because I remember banks used to be open on ML MLK Day. I mean like it wasn't like a huge national holiday, but That's 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 what's up though that we have something. I mean, for what he did, for what he stood for, I mean, it should be right. It should be giving him a, a, a holiday, even though one thousand percent. You know, even though the way the things are still today. Um. Okay, so the first time the day was officially observed in all fifty states was in the year two thousand. So when that last oh. state, when so South Carolina, I think South Carolina and New Hampshire were the last two to join up, and then from there on. But you know, I you know, well, I think we mentioned this at the beginning. Like to to me, you know, so you know, I'm Christian, so of course I believe in you know God and in the Savior. So to me, the most important holiday is you know is definitely you know, Christmas to ce celebrate his birth and then his resurrection, you know, in, in Easter. But next to that, you know, a man that stood for, that stood for love, stood for change, you know, stood for, you know, rights of, of a people. Cause you know, on, you know, on the inside, right. We're, we all have bones and blood and cells and, you know, now COVID antibodies and uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, we're, 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 we're relatively the same. We have different history, right? We've come from different places and some peoples in more recent history have struggled more than others, mm. but you know, it's time to, it's time to get past that. And if you are still dividing people by race, you know, in 2022, you're going to get left behind because I want no part of that. Um, I think the majority of people want no part of that. So we're, we're ready to, to you know, to heal uh, as a nation. In, in my opinion, you know, and I, I want to encourage that message more than anything else. 100%. And yeah, it was, it's time to move forward. And yeah, man, it's just, it's just time to move forward. It's, we're in 2022 now. Who knows when the end of the world is going to come or the end of the world is going to end through some cataclysmic event <laughs> as we uh, just right? so recently witnessed. I mean, did you know that was the most powerful volcanic eruption since like 1991? I think that's what I was reading. I believe it. Since 91, man. That was the most powerful volcanic eruption since 91. And that was just one. And it had that much. Uh, I'm just, it, it dumbfounds me how much power that was, man. Um, and I hope it was all natural. Because I heard, you know, back in my conspiracy theory days, back in the, what, 2001, 2099, 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, <laughs> I studied a program, the HARP program. I don't know if you heard about that. But it said that that HARP program developed by the government, the U.S. government, could manipulate storms cause earthquakes tsunamis and stuff like this i just i hope it was all natural man i just hope the, it wasn't the issue something that was created yeah 
Right. The issue with them messing with that kind of stuff is you can't control mother nature. Right. So they might end up killing themselves. <laughs> yeah. You know, and everybody on the planet, you know, messing with that kind of stuff. So yeah, I, I, I believe they probably, you know, if they, if you can think of it, right. So you just like, you know, they probably wondered, Hey, is, you know, are some of these other countries researching this? They probably found something like that. Maybe they found information. So like, we have to research it too. You know, I, I believe there, there is that motivating a lot of, you know, we, we've got to think like our enemies think to be able to prevent what they would try and do to us. So, you know, so I think a lot of that stuff, you know, and, and I hope that it's not more nefarious than that. Yeah. There were over 400,000 lightning strikes in that um, explosion. It was a, something like a thousand lightning strikes per, That's wild. per minute. That's so, so 400,000 lightning strikes in that area in that clume of smoke and everything that, that power man that is some scary rethink your life type of power you know like i seen uh there's a geo twitter geography or geo twitter uh, there's a thread on there everyone's just they're dumbfounded by the magnitude and power of this volcano volcanic eruption that is just they're going off they're studying all these numbers and stuff are coming in studying studies left and right about the how massive of an explosion it was and i mean the tsunami waves reached all the way to chile there's some people that passed uh, i think it killed one person in peru um the young lady and the gentleman that was swept away in donga by the tsunami a lady that um, started a dog shelter or something. I don't know if she was uh, confirmed. She's passed. She passed away because of the storm, uh, the tsunami. Rest in peace. You know what's sobering about mm. all this? Yeah. It's it's probably like in the history of Earth, right? It's probably like one of the weaker eruptions out there. <laughs> you know, we just, you know, our ability to record these types of things, to have the technology, but, you know, you and I love to dive into, you know, the cyclical nature of, you know, why you look at like the picture that, you know, your background, you know, of the pyramids, why, you know, thousands of years ago, was there technology that, you know, some of the, you know, some of the people came with that we can't replicate, we can't duplicate, you know, some of the things that they did, in, you know, in the past. So you think about these type of you know, these type, you know, mother nature and what she's capable of. And, you know, this one was like a little sneeze compared to like what she really could do. Right. Um, you know, the, definitely like, a, you know, like I started with, that's a, just a sobering thought. <clears throat> yeah, definitely it is. And then, um, and for us to wrap our head, like our heads around it is just, um, it's uh, like, the fact that that's not just the only volcano in that area, right? So this volcano, according to some studies, may have triggered different uh, volcanic activity throughout the land, I guess. So every thousand years, um, according to a, a research that I read about um, this, vol this uh, vol volcanic eruption. So this was on, on almost on par for a... a so every thousand years, this area or whatever has an explosion, has a volcanic explosion. And they dated it back to, um, here, I'll, let me pull up the article so we're not, so I'm not just talking on my my side note here. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, I've read so much about this dang volcanic eruption that it's, and a lot of it I get from my sister, she's a, She's all over covering all this stuff, information. But yeah, every thousand years, there's a um, volcano eruption of this magnitude. So some of these scientists were saying that... In that specific volcano, right? In that, that specific, specific... Yeah, yeah, in that specific volcano. So I'm like, that is crazy. So, and then other scientists are saying that um, this, is, this might not be an end there was another eruption. Like there was a third eruption from that same volcano that caused a little bit of tsunami waves. So not one explosion, not two, but a third. There has been a third recording of that volcanic eruption. 
another lesson to be learned from that is, you know, in, in all aspects of life, don't let that pressure build up so that you have that kind of explosion. Yeah. That part, (laughs) (laughs) you know, that can be with like anger or, you know, frustration, Mm -hmm. you know, you can release, you know, try Right. Mm -hmm. (coughs) Oh, Jake. (laughs) You think this would be a good time to announce our collaboration in a kind of like a side note of our show? Worldwide, worldwide. Yeah, no, no. Uh, <laughs> so we're planning like um, we've discussed this with the group and we're planning to have like a little like a side show, not a side show, but like a subtopic encouragers podcast starring Jake and myself that we'll be talking about different various topics such as like we're talking about right now, but like more like towards the scientific area and geology, rabbit holes, rabbit holes, all that type of stuff. So we don't know a name for it yet, but it's just, it's mostly going to be me and Jake talking about it. Cause we like, as you can see, if you're watching the video version of this um, podcast, almost 99% of the time, my background is either, like a tropical island or it's the pyramids the great pyramids and right now i have the great pyramids up as my background and jake usually has some science stuff up there but yeah we're going to talk about all different types of rabbit holes and um things like pertaining to that nature like um conspiracy theories stuff like this so we don't know the name of it yet but welcome to tune into our podcast where jake and i take you know take a dive down that lane take you on a journey (laughs) <laughs> and you know th- i think this is this is fun like we don't necessarily believe in, in some of these things but it's just so it, it's a I, li- I like to call them thought experiments right and mm-hmm. so you know if you don't ask questions how are you ever going to know the answers to anything and we're both very curious and we like to learn we're truth seekers right so but part of you know, part of finding truth is, you know, is it could just be fun and, uh, you know, just learning new things and, in, you know, enhancing your, you know, the more you learn, you know, the better, better you're able to kind of sift through that, what, you know, what is possible. And so I think that's what, you know, our thing for theirs, you know, maybe we'll take on some, you know, we might take on some more, some political issues here or there, but more than anything, we want to challenge everybody to, you know, to, to join this journey with, with us of thought experimentation, you know, the what ifs, you know, the what ifs, and then, you know, dive into that. And so, and I think that can be a lot of fun for everybody. Yeah. I mean, our, and it's encouraging, like, this is another side show, like it's an encouragement type of venture for us to talk about these experiences and different uh, ideas and different uh, thought processes into what might be happening or might, what could be, um, I've always been fascinated with space and especially with the pyramids and just the technology behind it. We used, like Jake was saying, we can't duplicate what they did long time, that long ago. And they say they did it by chisels and bronze or uh, by, you know, picks and axes to build this great pyramid, which is, wouldn't you want to know why or how, or the truth behind it all? That's where I'm going. Um, and to think that, maybe this earth was like divided. Like there was a certain experience, like a certain era came in and they lived during that time. They had technology during that time. And then, then were wiped out by some cataclysmic event. And then next thing you know, we come on and we form and we come up on the land and just go from, you know, from one era to another era, living a purpose, um, or of, um, this is just my opinion, right? <laughs> it's my crazy thought process, but maybe what if it was like that? And what, what are some things that point to that, that may, that might make that thought or theory true. It's right. So without, without trying, yeah. without trying to scare everybody, like the thought experiment here. So don't yeah. take your feelings down this road, just take your curiosity. But, you know, imagine if that, you know, lit this past volcano, right? What if that was, you know, 8.3 and, you know, we lost 75% of the earth's population. You think that, you know, we, we would lose a lot of the ability to replicate some of the technology we have because, you know, I don't know about you notice, but I can't build a cell phone. I don't even know how to build mm-hmm. a chip in it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I have very rudimentary skills. I couldn't build a car. I couldn't. So we would, you know, you see how easy it would be to lose mm-hmm. some of the technology that we have. And you have a tsunami rip through, you know, that that's going to, 
you know, you have a big enough explosion that can knock out all electronics. Um, you have, you know, a tsunami run through and erase all the libraries, you know, then what do we have left to learn from, you know, mm -hmm. you only have the spoken word. So you yeah. could see how easily, you know, civilization could reset, you know, just from just that little small thought experiment, but don't let it terrify you. This is, these are just, uh, you know, the fun, you know, fun little, you know, questions you could just ask, you know, how, or why um, some of these things could happen. Yeah, there's there, there's other podcasts that we didn't produce or didn't release because we went down this rabbit hole. <laughs> that for we the kept archive. The, yeah, for the archive, archive. So yeah, maybe we might release those before too soon or whatever. But yeah, so we don't have a name for that podcast necessarily, that segment or something. You know, like how Joe Rogan has the MMA podcast, like he, it's just strictly MMA, I guess. And then he has his regular right. one. So this is kind of this is going to be kind of like that. It's going to be where we go down the rabbit hole and talk about all those different ideas. And then we have the Encouragers podcast where we talk about uplifting and supportive stuff. So, yeah, be patient with us. This is brand new, but we're going to talk about it. See how it goes. But yeah, we need to. Um, yeah, so I thought that was a nice little segment into that. Maybe. We can just introduce people for those of you who are the, for the, uh, the three of you that are always listening to our podcast and a uh, shout out to Australia, Australia listeners. And what else? Shout out to um, everyone that's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And rep yeah, of course, of course. And, and don't sleep on this podcast because we are going to blow up. Absolutely. 100%. <laughs> Speaking of, sorry if I coughed that loud. Um, speaking of podcasts, what's going on with Joe Rogan's? Um, Joe, he's like getting attacked. Did you see that? Like in social, all of social media, Twitter or whatever, they're attacking him or they're trying to like um, disbar him or not disbar, but like denounce him. him kicked or, off. Yeah, they want to get him kicked off of Spotify. That's really what they want to do. You know that? Um, so Tim Pool kind of dove into. I was Why? watching a little bit of his his podcast today. Mm -hmm. You know, they 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 think that you know that there 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 obviously there is a you know there's a a theme out there. You know that vaccination is the only way to beat this pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's people that don't want it questioned out there. And you know how anti science is that? That's probably the most anti scientific thing you could say out there. Are you that fragile with your beliefs in your product or your beliefs in the vaccine that you can't handle somebody questioning some of the efficacy of it and then the side effects and those types of things? So. You know, I think part of uh, informed consent of taking a vaccine involves, you know, clear and honest presentation of all the data. And there's definitely a lot of data that's being covered up, um, making it hard to report, um, or it's being reported, but then not passed on. So, you know, so, so, you know, Joe is having experts in the field, they may be a dissenting opinion, but don't be so fragile in your own beliefs that you cannot handle uh, an opinion that is not of yours. Um, you know, that's something that, you know, kind of, you can hear maybe a little passion in my voice there, but, you know, us being so tribal in nature as, as people, we tend to like flock towards people that think like us. Right. And so we, you know, that's why we form like team blue and team red, which I hate by the way, um, because, you know, I, you know, more, what's more fun is, you know, team bears and you know team patriots then we can have some fun with it you know that i think that's you know more of a fun aspect of you know being tribal there but you know you have team vaccine and then you have team you know non-vaccine you have you know team preventative treatment all that kind of stuff so everybody's forming these teams out there um you know, rather than sharing all the information and data that's out there and then coming to an informed opinion of your own after and, you know, you have a lot of people that are just okay with being told what to do and they just do it without asking questions. And that's not, um, that's not a way that I live my life. You know, I ask questions about everything. So, and, you know, of course I can be wrong. Right. But I, um, but I am not so fragile that I can't handle someone's opinion that's different than mine. So I would, just, you know, part of us being encouragers is I would encourage you to, 
strengthen your resolve a little bit and, you know, and educate yourself and hear some things that you know, don't necessarily agree with. And then you don't need to attack that person or disown them for having a different opinion. Like it's healthy and helps you become a better individual. In my opinion, if you can, you know, if, if you can be, you know, your own person and, you know, don't just believe what you're told to, to, to believe, do your own research, you know, find out, um, you know, what you like, what you agree with, you know, look at the data and, and make your own decision, right? That, you know, that's one of the great things about us living in this country is, you know, it is, it's, it's, it's a free country and, you know, you can come to your own opinion. So, um, you know, rant hear, uh, almost no, over there. No, but, I hear uh, that passion. <laughs> I hear the passion in your voice, <laughs> not the passion. But yeah, absolutely. don't explain your life, <laughs> <laughs> man, bro. No, it's true. You know, I we had a podcast a couple of podcasts ago talking about I think I read an article or talked about something that they were coming after podcasts like the there's uh there's going to be <clears throat> like they um, want to censor them, huh? The censor podcast, like every single podcast, bro. So we do our podcast through Anchor, which is owned by Spotify. So maybe, hopefully, we can be protected because of how their platform is. You know, Spotify is a company from the Netherlands, is it? Or Denmark? Somewhere? Sweden? Somewhere out there in the Europe um, where they support this type of um, platform. But, yeah, they're. can we look that up real quick where they're from? Here, I'm going to look it up real quick. I got another. Yeah. Spotify is a company from the CEO of Spotify looks legit like Dr. Evil though. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Spotify is from which country? Stockholm, Sweden. Sweden. So I said one of the yeah, you're countries. right. So it's from Sweden. So and you know, I guess they're really um uh towards uh they're they're really supportive of this platform and podcast being free, free speech free speech yeah so <clears throat> yeah like jake was saying just go out and just look um and the, but the, you know there are people like the older people that are just they will believe what the government says what anyone you know that they see on tv and not think twice about it but and that i think is more dangerous than listening to a podcast that from a comedian that's five foot eight inches and likes to eat meat and take pictures of his face <laughs> after he's sweating in the gym. But <laughs> it, yeah, it's crazy how much influence that guy has. And, and um, just the, you know why there's, you know why they want to silence him. Right. So that's part of it is what we talked, we, what we just talked about. The other part is jealousy because you know, Joe averages 11 million views per episode, right? And then some of his, some of his more watched podcasts get up to like 50 million, 60 million views, right? So CNN on a show gets maybe 800,000 views. So you see there is jealousy of his reach, right? And, um, you know, they want that kind of power. It's that thirst for power that maybe they used to have back in the day, but because they've been twisting the truth around and you know and, and you know they're for profit right so they can do what they want but you know american people are tired of half truths and you know having to they're tired of like you're you know of, of a news organization reporting something in a slanted way like the example i'll give is they really were targeting joe rogan for using ivermectin right and ivermectin oh, yeah. hasn't had enough studies yet so but there's a lot of countries that have used it there's a lot of doctors in hospitals that have prescribed this as early treatment and then also as people are going through it so it's being used in the hospitals by doctors by people that know what they're doing right mm -hmm. um and the reason why it's antiviral so as antiviral properties it's been used since the 90s maybe even earlier mm -hmm. um the guy that invented it you know it's used on people it cures river uh, river blindness mm -hmm. so essentially it's a dewormer a very effective dewormer but also has antiviral properties right and i'm not plugging it anywhere. It's just, that's information you should know before you comment that it's a horse dewormer, right? Because it was used for her humans first. It was a human dewormer, you know, mm -hmm. but it also has other properties that, you know, may be beneficial. We need more studies, right? The problem with ivermectin per se, you know, I'll give you that, that example is it's not profitable for the pharmaceutical companies to run, um, you know, for them to run 
the studies necessary to find out the dosages and the timing and all that stuff. So the doctors really have been kind of experimenting to see what would work. They know it's a safe drug, which is why they're using it. So, you know, there's very little, if uh, little to no side effects for that one. So what they did, you know, what CNN did, you know, you remember, so on YouTube, they changed the color of Joe Rogan's face when he was sick with COVID and made it look like he had no color in his face. They literally edited the color to make, you know, you'll, you'll have to look this up yourself to see, because you can see what Joe posted, mm-hmm. uh, which is, he looked, you know, you could tell he was sick, but you know, he had full color in his face and then he, it, they changed the whole color palette of the video <laughs> to fit their narrative and just people, you know, so, you know, you have, you know, 11 million people that are watching Joe's you know, his, his post that he has out there and the things that he said, and then they watch this on CNN after they already saw Joe post it on his YouTube channel, Mm -hmm. you know, they, people don't want to be lied to. They're tired of that. So that's why their viewership is down so much is because people, you know, they don't want that anymore. They're so sick and tired of, of, of a slant, you know, of, you know, that's just, I think it's just so draining on, you know, the American people in general to have to deal with that kind of thing and sift through. Why can't you just report the news accurately i know that that was you can tell obvious they were they were doing something nefarious it's like if you put the two videos comparison of the two night and day one is colored and one is augmented to make him look like he's dying the color <clears throat> right and I, and I saw uh, on instagram i saw like his first post before cnn decided to run with this and do it and it, it was just you know, it, 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 the news you organizations all were, I, I it, think they had talks of it. And I don't, I don't know if it may be, you know, one of his podcasts, he was like, should I sue him? He was talking to one of his guests there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, he would, you know, he would be able to do that. So, you know, he'd, he'd win you know, mm-hmm. too as yeah. well for one that trying to say that he took a horse dewormer when it was prescribed by his doctor. So, you know, it's just, you know, people are, people are just tired of it. It stresses people, you know, stresses me out. I'm sure it stresses other people out when you just have to sift through like that kind of like deliberate, uh, deceive, you know, deceiving that they're doing for their own clicks and, you know, for their own narrative and and then they're petty and jealous because that only goes out to, you know, 400,000 to 800,000 people. And then Joe posts something and it goes out to 11 million right away. So I'm sorry, your content sucks. That's why no one listens or watches you and so in joe's content right and joe's content doesn't and he's he tries to find the truth he's not perfect i'm not trying to say anything that but but why so many people watch him is because he is on a quest you know to find out the truth of things and has you know people on well they may be controversial they are experts in their field right not Mm -hmm. everybody in one field agrees with each other but that's what makes it so good is you can have a civil debate, you know, which is really what's going on on a lot of these shows, right? Or, you know, it, it depends on the show, right? Because he'll have, you know, he'll have like what we talked about earlier, he'll have the MMA, you know, he'll have different themes on there, but, you know, he'll have a civil debate and Joe is prepared too. So he'll come, you know, you can tell he knows his stuff. He's got an incredible memory. So he remembers a lot of these things off the top of his head. So it makes him a good interviewer and he'll, he'll push back if he doesn't agree with something too. Oh, yeah. um, you know, and a lot of people don't know, you know, J- Joe is very, you know, would turn into a pro Joe, but you know, pretty much all podcasters, you know, we, we are glad that Joe is there because really it sets the, um, it sets the theme for the rest of that. You can, you know, you can, you can really be a quest for truth and, um, you know, you don't have to manipulate people to, you know, get views on your show. You know, you can, you can kind of really make it what you want to make it. Um, so he gives like hope, I think to everybody out there, um, in this space yeah. that you can kind of be yourself. Yeah. You know, when we were starting our podcast, the only, the way I found Joe Rogan was going to do research on like number one podcast. Right. And I, and I went and saw an episode of his, I, I can't remember who it was. Um, actually, no, I remember who it was. He had on the, um, the alien, the space alien guys. Um, what's his name? He's a director and he had the, the guy that was, um, I can't remember his name, but it was a space alien one. And I was so fascinated by that episode (laughs) that I was like, wow, where, why haven't I heard this from anywhere else? 
And then that's what made me right. just keep listening. It was that one. I just researched to see what his format was or how he did his shows. And ever since then, I was like, I was glued to his content. And then next thing you know, he has guest after guest after guest talking about relevant subjects mm -hmm. that I'm interested many in. Many different topics, many yeah. different topics too, right? So if you yeah. aren't interested in one show, you know, just wait because he's going to have... <laughs> You know, because he'll he'll have people come on that you know are, are studying like human sexual behavior, and then he'll have some people come on that just you know study the ancient you know the uh, you know the the the, the um, what was it called the, the lower lost city of Atlantis yeah yeah lost city of Atlantis the yeah. you know the young younger Dryas period where you know we had some asteroids hit the Earth you know where then you have Graham Hancock who talks about you know, what we talked about earlier, right, where mm -hmm. we had, you know, civilizations thousands of years ago with technology that we can't replicate. So, he, you know, he kind of dives into that. And then he'll have, you know, an MMA fighter on and, you know, it'll be fun. Then he'll have a bunch of his friends on. He'll, you know, he'll get drunk and, um, you know, smoke, uh, you know, smoke some cigars and, you know, some some of Snoop's line and, you know, just have fun. You know, he'll talk, he'll chop it up with his friends and you know, they'll kind of, you know kind of similar to a mix you know uh he'll, yeah. you know clown on his friends and have fun and mm -hmm. uh you know just go with that so it's just fun because it's diverse and then you get to see like you know with that amount of time you get to see you know how human a lot of these people really are and you know a lot of them you know deep down are very similar to to us as well here at you know in our homes listening and, and it's, it's a great thing too because podcasts and audio audio listening tapes are some of the most consumed media or entertainment things out there right now and you can consume like a media podcast or a, you consume podcasts while doing other things like why do you think that is it, it, you're listening to it and you don't have to you don't have to pay attention with your eyes your eyes can focus on your task at hand and you can still receive information like you can still even, you can still receive information. Like like for example, the person listening to this right now driving down down the road, they can concentrate on the road driving and still consume what we're saying in a podcast form, an audio form, without getting in an accident. Like it's totally different with uh, paying attention to watching a video or something. Right? Well, I'll I'll say like you so you know of course. You know, those that have been listening to the podcast know I wasn't on originally, right? So what drew me to you listening to your podcast, of course, first and foremost, you guys are my friends, right? For a long time. We've known each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think human beings crave the long form discussion. Mm -hmm. And so although when you're listening in a podcast, of course, you're not talking back, but um, you know, we're used to, you just think like, go back a hundred years, right? So we, we sat around a fire and told stories and talked about our dreams and our hopes. And, you know, that, so it is literally in our DNA, I think, to, to have this long form discussion, you know, form of communication, which is now turned into podcasting, right? Because, um, you know, one of the, one of the things that's, you know, I think awesome about, you know, the Polynesian culture and specifically Tongan Fijian, where, you know, where you sit around and drink kava and you, tell stories because that's one of the few remaining times where we're still doing that, you know, as, as, as a people, you know, we do it for fun too. <laughs> yeah. um, but I think, you know, I, I think that is a inherent need of, of, of human beings to have that long form discussion. And I think it's more effective too. Like you were saying, it's effective, not only if uh, compared to like a news segment, right. In a news section, in the news, um, environment new segment of tv show you only have a certain amount of minutes like each each segment of the tv show or newscast you're watching is produced it's produced down to the second of how long each segment is going to be so if he if you let's say if he had if you had joe rogan if, if his show wasn't like a tv tv news format it'll be produced down to the second you can't you can't talk that much you can't get out all the points you want to get out in two in like 30 seconds or 45 seconds, however long right. the producer slots your time for. Right. So if you have a two minute, 30 second slot time to talk about new cars, there's only so much you can talk about. Whereas in the podcast, man, long form, you get all the bells and whistles of the car. You can figure out what's going to happen with the car, how, how much gas, what's the tech behind the car, the type of, you know, steering columns you can get all the, various accessories and stuff whereas you know you can get that in a podcast and it's more it's more uh i don't know 
beneficial maybe in the long run. But agreed. Yeah. I would even go above that and say needed. Yeah, needed. There you go. But man, it's uh, everyone has a, everybody and their mama has a podcast right now. But it's I still it's a good thing though you know it's a really good thing that there are podcasts out there, and if there's any other podcasts out there by qualities that you have that you know that are dope and worth listening to, let us know. I like I really I'm looking for different shows to listen to from people from you know Polynesia anything really crime syndicate podcast shows or i listened to a podcast about um coloring how to color grade your film like that is blows my mind every time i listen i learn something new but yeah this is uh this is great but yeah back to the what we were kind of we're talking about that they're trying to censor censor these podcasts and like really like crack down on what we're saying in our podcast even our little podcast the encourage your podcast they're they're coming after every like I don't know who's coming in after it, but people who don't like us talking about being open and three free thinkers, those type of people, they can't not stand podcasts. Sorry, I keep coughing. All good, all good. Uh, um, yeah. Side side question as well. Notice so What's for up? those that are heavy consumers of our content and maybe would want to showcase their product or sponsor us mm -hmm. how what's the best way for them to reach us uh email is the best way to reach us or contact us through instagram because we're we're all we all have access to our instagram account everyone runs it and we all have connection or we all we're all logged into it and we're, someone's always checking our instagram account so if you go to what's our Instagram? Shoot, I don't even know what our Instagram is. The Encourager Show, is it? Hold on. My bad. The Encourager Show. If you look up and type in the Encourager Show on Instagram, you can DM us if you want to um, place a product, you know, sponsor us, place a product line in our for your pod in our in our podcast or place um, or partner or partner or whatever, hit us in our DMs. Also, our email is the encouragers show at gmail.com. That's the T H E encouragers with an S E N C O U R A G E R S show S H O W at gmail.com. But the, the fastest and easiest way contact us through our IG, the encouragers show. Awesome. Jake, when do you get into town again? When do you land in Dallas? Uh, 824, assuming nothing gets canceled on uh, Friday. Friday. Yeah, we'll get in. Me and Luther, we'll get in around 5, and we're going to head straight. We'll probably have Donga pick us up, head straight to the Airbnb. And then we're going to um, – did you see Donga's itinerary that we have? <laughs> he said an itinerary? Yeah, he sent an itinerary. We're, we're going to have dinner at the Airbnb all together because – Gins, gins will be closed by the time you guys get in. Jin's restaurant, by the way, everyone listening, if you're ever in Dallas and you want to go to Korean barbecue, you have to go to Jin. Jin's um, Korean barbecue. J I N S. Jin's. There's a couple locations throughout the Dallas area, but it is one of the best barbecue, Korean barbecue spots I've ever been to personally. And I've been to a lot of them in New York, which is has some of the best Korean barbecue ever and Korea. What made what made this specific barbecue better? The selection of food. So you have a wide variety of selection, open food that you can like like a buffet. Like you can go ahead and eat in buffet style, or you can have them you or you can order your meats uh like a la carte style too. But wide variety. Um and the beef, the beef belly, ooh. That's going to get it a Saturday. We're going to have just <laughs> one platter of beef belly. Like if you have, if any of you have listening, it has been the Yoshinoya's and had the Yoshinoya beef bowls. The beef belly is the best thing to Korean barbecue. It's one of the top things I like. So we'll have one platter of that and then whatever you guys want on the side, but it is really good. The wide variety. And then their chicken wings are off the hook. The, the poo poo platter stuff that they have there, sir. Oh man, it's amazing. 
you're gonna love it jake i can't wait to you to you and tech uh experience that place and luther it's gonna be awesome making me hungry <laughs> man bro speaking of hunger dude what time did you finish last night on the freaking bowl bro Jake i think was... at like 11 11 a.m oh my god oh that's right because i was at work <laughs> by the time you finished my seat bro yeah you and Tonga are getting you and Tonga and tech are getting like head starts on uh your pre-mixes man i haven't even mixed the bowl and like since the last time brett was here brett was here that's the last time i make <clears throat> That's not the kind of head start that I want, though. <laughs> Bro. So I dumped. So what happened last, you know, what happened last night? Um, Feeling hella mafia or what? I, it was, yeah, it was taufua, man. It was, it was, uh, I poured too much kava in the, in the, uh, so when I was mixing it, I didn't realize it until I was mixing it and mm. I just poured too much in there. So I was like, all right, you know, whatever, whatever. We'll be, you know, I thought we were going to do the podcast last night. Usually it goes quick. Yeah. And so, it was like it was almost my whole kumete <laughs> by me by saying it was so it was yeah it was it, it needed it needed more water but i don't want to extend it mm-hmm. so yeah i i uh I, I pushed the limits of what i was capable of uh early this morning <laughs> Bro, i don't yeah. want to go i don't i don't want to go that far uh this weekend Man, although we uh, might we may yeah, you guys aren't gonna get those um three little words out for me when it when it's kind of, when is the when i'm done is i am done and like you guys, hey it's up to you hey, it's, it's up, up to you, you. <laughs> oh no those three words right there those three words of death it's up to you if you have ever mixed kava or drank kava in a setting oh man those three words are the death of people <laughs> hey what's up one more inch <clears throat> one quarter <laughs> a little quarter <laughs> That's Aussie's thing. Quarter, little quarter. Just you know, oh, just go s- squeeze the cl- the cloth a little bit. And not that you sent a kilo of or two kilos of kava to Donga's card shop. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> there's you know, there's going to be a lot of people there. I bet you will go through that kind of quick. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, that's right. His yeah, family's going to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to be me, you, Donga. Lute, tech, Lute. tech um, his two brothers, uh-huh. and then um, uh, one of his boys Lute is coming ain't up from be San, drinking. San Antonio. She'll be with, she'll be with Donga's wife she'll and be the other wives. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, I'm excited. And that Airbnb has its own separate call up or like a clubhouse, right? Like in the back. Yeah, there. like AZ, AZ style. Mm-hmm. You, you, have you... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a Shout second, out. I forgot that you lived there for a long time, <laughs> and I know this. <laughs> yeah, and you live there too. Shout out to our Arizona listeners. Shout out, thank you for listening. Shout out to our Australia listeners, New Zealand listeners, and those of you in Dubai right now. Um, thank you for listening in Dubai. Shout out to our missing podcast host in Arizona as well. Oh. Who's in Arizona? Oh, <laughs> it's because the Cardinals the, lost, right? Without naming names. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. Shout out, shout to, out to our our Western and in Midwestern uh, podcast hosts that are missing as well. There you go. Shout out to you guys, gentlemen, for listening. We miss you. <clears throat> but yeah, we man, miss your besides, voices. We miss you. But uh, yeah, man, want to wrap this up? We good? Yeah. How long have we been going? I, you know, I, I didn't want to record this. I just, and, and just, I just press record just in for that. It's just so not for the hell of it, but um, it's just a habit. Just press in case. Record. Yeah. Yeah. Because honestly, before I we think started, there's some guys, good content in there. Yeah. Before we started, we were just gonna just because we were trying to figure out Jake's audio here for a little bit and we, just hear we me were, cussing early <laughs> <laughs> for figuring out his headphone situation but yeah what, once we finally work. got it we were like okay let's just uh once we get your audio figured out then we'll just call it a night and do our show tomorrow but we just ended up keeping we just ended up kept going and that's how it is when we put the headphones on and get in front of this microphone and computer but yeah man 
props to everyone celebrating MLK Day today. Props to big props and big ups. Respects to Martin Luther King. Thank you for your sacrifice and for doing everything that you did. It really has changed the world. Big props to him. And um, shout out to everyone in Tonga. Please keep your prayers open for our people in Tonga. Um, if there's anything, you, if there's if there's anyone that knows how to get a hold of people in Tonga, or if you know of someone that has a satellite phone, please hit us up in our DM. Definitely. Because um, we're all st still trying to get a hold of our family and loved ones. It's been over 24 hours, what, 48 going on two, three days now that we haven't heard anything from any of our family and our loved ones in Tonga. So if you're listening to this podcast and um, happen to know how to get a hold of someone in Tonga that has um, communication or comms to be able to communicate, please let us know. But Jake, you have anything else you want to talk about? Uh, we could probably just close with uh, thanking our sponsors. Oh, there you go. Go sh shoot, shoot, shoot that out. Shoot our sponsors up. Big up to our sponsors. Jake, take it away. So, you know, definitely thankful for the Card House, uh, one of our great sponsors owned by Tonga. Big up. Yep, yep. And um, also Ofa Training um, as well, run by Coach Coach Will. Um, yep, yep. So we just want to thank both of them for, for sponsoring us as well. And we're uh, looking forward to having more sponsors as well. Yeah, especially your your main sponsor, Ofa's Kava. Shout out to Ofa's Kava, who will be sponsoring our getaway weekend this this coming up, right? <laughs> That's correct. Make make sure we tag him or Ofa's Kava on this podcast. Make sure we tag them. <laughs> our future sponsor. There you go. But yeah, shout out to all y'all. <laughs> Thank you guys for listening and rocking with us. And we'll see you at the next episode. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.